Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiskey Book. We are continuing our series on my version of what five whiskeys would you take or keep if you could only take or keep five. Stay tuned to find out why this is the most nerve-wracking series set for this series yet. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. What are we doing? This is, again, my take on the popular what five whiskeys would you keep? But this is more what five would you take if you could only take five if you were part of the Fellowship of the Ring. We are joining Frodo, Aragon, uh, Boromir, Gimli, Mary, Pippin, Sam, Frodo, and Gandalf. On the fellowship and our packs are only so big we have to take food, we have to take supplies, but we get to take five whiskeys. Of course we get to take five whiskeys, why wouldn't we? So what five would we take? Well let's set the stage a little bit. What are we doing? If you, And so Elrond is talking and they are trying to figure out who's gonna go. And Elrond says the road must be trod but it will be very hard. And neither strength nor wisdom will carry us far upon it. This quest may be attempted by the weak with as much hope as the strong. Yes, such is off the course of deeds that move the wheels of the world. Small hands do them because they must. While the eyes of the great are elsewhere. Sounds like a daunting task. I don't want to leave the best whiskey behind. So what do we have so far to take with us? Well, I started this series because I'm sitting around and thinking, well, if I have to go somewhere, I know I'm taking Eagle Rare if I have a bottle, and luckily I have a new one, thank goodness. I'm taking Wild Turkey Rare Breed because you can't beat that stuff and you can find it. And I'm taking Red Breast 12 because it's not a bourbon, but it is the other best whiskey I've ever had, and I love it. So those are the three that get to go, but who gets to join them? I don't know. Our first bracket, we ended up with Woodford Reserve Double Oaked going in the first bracket. That doesn't mean it gets to go. That just means it gets to be put in a tournament. Second round, we had the biggest surprise so far, Angel's Envy Bourbon beat out some hitters and that's in the bracket so today we have round three with my most nerve-wracking bracket ever because there are two here that if this wasn't mid-90s proof and i had more to choose from probably wouldn't even be in the here so let's figure out the lineup okay let's First of all, I'll start with one that I don't mind if it makes the finals. I absolutely love this. I love the story behind it. I've already done a video on this. I'll put that link below. This is Horse Soldier Signature. I many times like the premium or the platinum. Um, this is a small batch, 95 proof, 60-ish dollars in my area. Uh, what I like about it is Horse Soldier is a bourbon that is distilled by a company run by former special forces, in particular ones that were um, in Afghanistan when, when they very first went in. Uh, the movie 12 Strong is a, about some of them, and they're the ones that came up with this bourbon, and it is really good. Sometimes the story outdoes the... the, the the dram not this time really good stuff so this one haven't had any of these in a while and this, i don't know which glasses are which my lovely wife poured them all um but this is one of them that i'm hoping comes out pretty close on top another one that i wouldn't mind taking makers 46 this one is a 94 proof about 46 dollars the 46 is the Maker's Mark Stave profile. It's not 46% alcohol. It is actually 47% alcohol, uh, 94 proof, like I said. Um, that one, I don't mind at all. That's a, got some, that's a weeded whiskey and it's got some uh, uh, like toffee flavors that I usually really, really like. The third one that I'm not exactly sure about 
if it makes it, I'll be surprised, but I wouldn't hate it. The new Benchmark series, this is the single barrel. I've already done one of the ones in the Benchmark series. Wasn't super impressed, but I hear a lot of good about the single barrel. This is the most expensive of the uh, Benchmark new line. They have the regular Benchmark, which, uh, no, <laughs> just no. It's, it's, if you're just getting into bourbon, maybe, it's really light. But for the price, I think there's some lighter ones out there like um, Old Forester, some of their lower end ones that would be better than that. But in this series, they have the top floor, bond, the bottled and bond, the full proof, the small batch, and the single barrel. And we are going to try the single barrel today because this one is 95 proof and it fits into, again, this is, maybe I didn't describe that good enough, this is the, the mid 90s proof battle. We've done a couple low proof, uh, sub 90, around 90. This is 95 proof. Next time we'll be getting into the 100, the bottle and bonds. And then after that, we'll go up. Okay, well, what do we have that I don't know that I've had? And I, if they make it, I'm going to, I won't quit the channel, but I'm going to be shocked. First one is kind of a, an oddball. It's the, the, Dark Horse Way Oddball. This is Wathen's Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. It's from the Charles Medley uh, Distillery. It's 94 proof, high corn mash bill. Um, I can't remember, I think I paid, this was about $35. Okay, the benchmark was 25. This one, Wathen's, I think was a little more. I got it on sale, um, so it might have been well, I didn't. I don't know the price on that, but it wasn't super spending. But I took a couple uh, drinks of that one, and maybe now that it's opened up, it's better. But the first impressions weren't great. But that was a while ago, so we'll see. I didn't like Angel's Envy at first either, and it wowed me last time. Now the fifth and final one we're doing today that I will be <laughs> disappointed if it makes it because I really haven't had a good good uh, go with it lately is Yellowstone. Now this is not any special edition, just as, this is just the landmark edition, bourbon whiskey, 93 proof baseline goodness. So there's the lineup. So Elrond needs us to go. We're filling our packs. Are any of these worthy? Let's dive in and find out. Okay, this is um, this is going to be letter A, and I have these lettered at the bottom, not the names on the bottom, so if I look at the bottom, I have no idea. I didn't put the stickers on, so I don't know which bottle they correspond to. That's how I do this. That's a little musty, because I, I really, if it's Wathens or Yellowstone, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to question all, all my choices. Oh, that is really like, not musty, malty. It's a dusty, I don't know, like, it's hard to describe. It's like a dust, you, you smell dust, but it's not terrible. I guess, um, Whoppers maybe, without the chocolate on it. I'm going to nose all of these first, and then we'll go back and, and partake, but... I get a little floral, uh, honey, light vanilla, but it's just that you can't have bourbon almost without a little light vanilla in there. Oh, that's different. Okay, hay maybe, uh, musty hay. Oh no, I'm getting okay. Coming back on it a little bit, I'm getting more of the uh, a little bit of barrel, a little baking spice. Okay, now I'm getting some stuff on this one. Okay, getting past the, the mustiness and the maltiness. I'm getting a heavier vanilla with a honey with baking spice. Okay, cool. Will this be? Yes, B. Oh, we got them in order. Okay. Woo, B is different. B is lighter, or younger. Um, not lighter, younger. There's a little bit of a, like a wood funk. It's almost, it's not wild turkey funk. It's... Yeah, 
it's like you went into a, we were talking about the first one being, I said dusty, it wasn't, it was malty. This one's dusty. This one is like you go into an old hardware store that's been abandoned for a while and you have old tools and dust on the shelves and you go in and you close the door and it blows the dust and you kind of get that. All right, C. Oh, C is much sweeter. C is like caramel, banana. There, there's. This is like a. Um, I've described banana sundaes before. This one is a banana sundae, but a little more strawberry on it, mixed with the the vanilla ice cream and just a touch of banana. This is like you've already eaten a banana in the banana sundae, and it has topped with strawberries, and now you're just eating the, the melted part that's mixed with and you're getting that hint of banana but you're getting a lot of vanilla and some strawberry sauce okay D here we go okay need a second I'm not getting much on this one after C there is caramel vanilla in there Boy, you gotta reach down and get it though. Um, hmm. Little fruit, a little bit of fruit in there. You just, it, it, if it's this one stood by itself, I think it would be, I would get more out of it. And now that I'm coming back to it, coming off of C though, it was, C was so much bolder. This almost has a Buffalo Tracy um, kind of that raspberry, red berry with cola. That's what I'm going to say that is. Red berry and cola, but light on the cola. This is like, not Coke. This is, <laughs> this is, this is the cheap stuff and it's gone flat. There's a little baking spice and, and, and oak on there. Okay, let's go to E. Ooh, E is... Oh, this is kind of neat. All of these are so different. E is... E's a trip. This is like waffles. This is... This is baking, but not baking spice. This is the flour. If you're making something and you mix the flour before you cook it, and it's kind of waffles too. Young. I think that one's young. I think that's kind of what I'm getting. I think I'm getting hay. A uh, youngness to it. Um, but good. It, it, it's different than the rest. It, it gives you a different experience. It, it's This one is light. This is... It's not as light as D as far as the, the how pungent it is. It's just a little more relaxing. Okay, all right, enough of that. Let's get into this. A. Oh, I go back to A and I get heavy. That, that, that malty turned into more malty <laughs> with more vanilla caramel. All right, let me try this one. Oh, that's got a good initial spice. It zaps you right on the, I'm going back. My first videos, I said zap a lot. This one does it. It gives you a, a really, like a poke on the tongue in several spots. It's, it's spiky, but not in a bad way. Not like super heavy uh, um, proof spike. Not, it's not, it's a little spicy. It's like it's got a little pepper in there, a little chili powder. It's got a decent finish. Um, Legs, mm, the viscosity, it's, it's not too bad. The viscosity is okay, I would say. I wouldn't even call it medium. I'd call it low to medium. Um, the And you could tell the viscosity doesn't cover your mouth. It doesn't coat. But that spiky, that spice, it, it's almost cinnamon now. Cinnamon uh, sits on the back, actually sits on the top of the tongue and the roof of the mouth. All right, B. 
This was the one that was funky and younger. Little peanut, yeah. Ooh, I still get that. Really young. Young bourbon just has this funk to it that's... I don't think there's anything they can do about it. It's really hay. Um, hay forward. Uh, I feel like I'm back on the horse uh, riding through the fields and somebody just ran a, a baler or a swather through the field and I'm getting all the hay. Uh, there's a little bit of sweetness right off the bat. I got to give it that, but the finish, there's no finish and the, the palette is hay. Almost candied caramel with the hay. It's like it's trying to be a little bold, but a little young too. I could see where somebody getting into bourbon might might take to this one. It's not heavy at all, it, but uh, no, not now. All right, time for C. Got a little water. C is more, as I go back through these, more the, uh, uh, the just bourbon-y bourbon, uh, just straight up caramel, vanilla, vanilla, <laughs> honey. Definitely more vanilla and honey than caramel. A little baking spice. But pretty good. That one definitely has a bolder flavor than B. Uh, more wood. Definitely more wood. The finish is, is wood char. Like um, you're out camping and in the morning after the fire's gone out and and you put water on it and you have those sticks that have the black char on them and if you accidentally lick that or something why would you do that? I don't know but that's what I'm getting don't ask me how I know that okay the finish there's something right down the middle uh, the, the right to the back of the tongue down the throat uh, I almost want to say medicinal like it's a, a flavored medicine, but better. Uh, the, the, the char actually helps that. Um, that, one's, that one's definitely better than B. I don't mind that one. That one's got a little bit of different flavor. I, we're, we'll have to talk about that one. Okay, that's weird. So the first time we did D, <coughs> excuse me, it was way lighter than C. Not this time. This one's actually the sweetest one yet. This is the very the most um, most caramel. Most I'm not getting maple syrup on any of these. None of these are like that, but it's got a little uh, mustiness to it. But oh, that's got some rich, rich vanilla in there. That's this is uh, Cinnabon territory. This is the the van the, the cream that goes on the Cinnabon. And you can almost get the baking. Um, we talked about the flour before. This is the bread. This is the the bread, not the cinnamon, but you got the bread that the cinnabons made out of with the 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 cream, the creamy top. Oh, yeah, that's good. Almost needs a little more proof. The palate has those flavors, but it's not quite. It it doesn't smack you around. It's good. Um, Need some more proof to it, and it would be excellent. Okay, E. <laughs> Not everybody would get this, but E reminds me of a horse trailer. With baking spice. I still think this one's young. Honey. Tea. I'm getting so much like green tea on this. This is this is you made some green tea, put it on the kettle, put the bag in it, and then just put about two teaspoons of honey in it. That's what this is. Um, I definitely have two that um, we're not going forward. I'm going to push those way forward right now. So I've got three A, C, and D that I'm going to do a real quick go back and forth on and I will come back and let you know what I come up with, who's going to win, who's going on to the final bracket 
uh, to face off against Woodford Reserve Double Oak and Angels Envy to take on the Fellowship or wherever we're going. These are just the five that I'm going to take with me. So give me a second and I'll be right back with you. All right, I have a clear one and two, which we may end up with a loser's bracket because my loser's my, or my second place um, consolation bracket that the winner of that will get in the finals because right now I have Russell's 10 and 1910 in that consolation bracket. And uh, those are two that I would have guessed would have won. I love some Russell's 10. That's a really good daily. Um, a little too expensive to be daily now, but like you can just have that at any time. It kind of goes with the... It'd be a good... I wouldn't say replacement for Redbreast 12, but as far as a bourbon, if I was going to have a bourbon that did what the Redbreast 12 did, it would be Russell's 10. I, I like the obviously like the Redbreast better, but they're both, because the Redbreast is an Irish, the Russell's 10 kind of has some of those Irish qualities where it's lighter, sunnier, uh, not so deep and dark. Nothing wrong with deep and dark sometimes, but... Um, if you just need something, it's I really like to use Russell's 10 for like a starter on the day because it just doesn't, it's not so harsh. I'm, I'm stalling because I have A and C and um, this is going to be tough. This is a, shoot, a shootout. All right, everybody. We have a winner, a clear winner in second place. The rest are... Well, we have I have two clearly in last place in the last two places, two in the first two places, and one. Then give it any day given my palette probably could have done all right. All right, everybody, I've got the winners, I've got the clear losers, uh, the ones who aren't going with me. Um, most of the times when I drink bourbon, I'd say there are no losers. This one, there's a couple in here that they're okay. I. I Honestly, I'd want my money back. Um, kind of turn into a, a bourbon snob. I really like the good stuff, and, and I really, really tried. I bought a bunch of cheap stuff and compared it, and there's some stuff like Remus that I really like, and Cooper's Craft 100 is really good. But those are right around 40 ish dollars. They're not super cheap. And I'm just finding that the ones that are under 30, that there's just nothing that I really, really dig. But we'll see. I don't know. Maybe this benchmark's in the top top go last place though we have today is b please 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 don't be horse soldier no last place oh, i cannot tell you the relief that is yellowstone second to last place and i'll go over it real quick yellowstone um very young hay forward a lot of funk to it. It just, uh, I, I didn't like it when I first opened it. It's been, it's been, I've had it open for a while now. It's it's had its time. Kind of like Angel's Envy. After it had time, it got really good. This just, no, just no. Second to last place is E. <laughs> I can keep going. <laughs> Wathens. I promise you folks, I didn't cheat. I, I, those were just the two that were young, funky, hay, and that's what I got the first time I drank them. And I, I honestly wish I could get my money back on those. So so the last two, Wathens and Yellowstone. And some, someday maybe I'll have some little, you know, i got to make some things to show you what place these are in. But, but Yellowstone last, Wathens next to last. Now this is where it gets a little nerve-wracking. So D is my third place and D yep I got D oh breaks my heart horse soldier but here's what I'm gonna say I love this horse soldier it's really good on its own it's sort of like a Blanton's if you drink it on its own it's really good but compared to some other things we'll see but the 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 top series, the higher proof series, is going to be in in one of the, the top ones, and that one I really really like. So it's got another it's got it's got another shot. Okay. I'm kind of I just got done on the soliloquy about I've never had anything cheap that I really like, but hey, benchmark single barrels in the top two. Let's find out. What the heck? Let's just go. What's number one? That would be C. Dun, 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 dun. 
Nope. Second place, Benchmark Single Barrel. Top place, after I went back through them several times, it wasn't even close. Makers 46 is tops. So if we want to set this like it is, there we go. Winner, winner. I'm not going to say it, but that's your winner today. Hey, thank you for tuning in. We'll have episode four, which will be really cool because that's going to be Bottled and Bond series. And we may have to do four and five because I that's probably what I have the most of is Bottled and Bond. And there's some heavy, heavy hitters in that one. I can't wait to do that. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I will see you next time on Whiskey Book and thanks for watching.